actual rocket scientists make yeah. sixteen eighty seven an hour, thirteen an hour. <laughs> You're, you're pretty good. within striking distance <laughs> of the person who might be from, I mean, this is all a part of the same statistic. This person performed brain surgery. Hey, I brought you your Applebee's two for 20. I saw this video. It was being shared for some reason. It, was, it came out in September. Yeah. This video was being shared again, making the rounds, because someone in uh, my timeline said, I'm, I'm really thankful this year to not be in the, in the slavery-based tipping oh, industry oh of service, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. They were really upset. And I realized, you know, I believe that tipping was rooted in slavery and that it was unfair. And I was like, well, it's kind of something we do and it's fair now because there were videos like this. There was the Adam Ruins Everything uh, yeah. on tipping. which you, lot of nothing. You, you just think, why would they <laughs> yeah. politicize it? Yeah. Why would they not tell the truth? And that's where today almost everything is political, whether you want it to be or not. I want to ask you a question today. Did you believe that tipping was rooted in slavery? Did you believe it was unfair? Did you believe a lot of these myths you heard from Adam Ruins Everything and Fusion? Roll clip. What if I told you that tipping has a racist past? And it's not just because black waiters get smaller tips than their white co-workers, or that the tipped minimum wage just makes the poor poorer. Couple of things, we'll get to the racist past. <laughs> uh, maybe sometimes, I know this is demonetized, you can hear that bong yeah. sound. <laughs> maybe because black people tip less. Yeah. They tip less and a majority of them actually don't know or agree upon what the appropriate tip rate is compared to white people. So culturally, black people tend to work in areas where there would be more black people and they tip less. That, that could be a part of it. But l let's get into the whole tipping racist history because this is something a lot of people believe and at one point I did as well. It's that the custom of tipping in America was racist from the very beginning. America and racist. All the way back to slavery. America slavery. Tipping started among European aristocrats. Wait, what? <laughs> America Americans racist adopted slavery. The practice in the mid 1800s, and it spread throughout the country after the Civil War. Look at that sleight of hand. I was watching it go. Yeah. Hold on a second. Uh, it has been rooted in slavery, racist in America. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Thought it was learning. In 1700s Europe. <laughs> Exactly. So, first off, that should tip you off right away. That is it's actually not true. According to the scholarly work on the subject, tipping began way before slavery, had nothing to do with racism, likely began in the late Middle Ages, and somewhere by the time of Tudor England in, I think, 1485, something like that. Tipping was commonplace. So, right off the bat, they want you to think America, racist, slavery. We came up with our idea. Yeah. yeah. And uh, even that... I wouldn't say is not entirely accurate, it's inaccurate. Next clip. According to research by activist Saru J. Raman, <laughs> newly freed slaves were flocking to major cities to find work. Who? <laughs> this is the thing too, when people <laughs> accuse us of not sourcing properly, this is fusion. This is like a major yeah. network on Facebook. It's our source, a girl. A girl. <laughs> Saru J. Raman, who? Well, oh, here you go. She's on the Feministing Five. She writes for Huffington Post. She's a leftist activist. So yeah. there you go, right off the bat. I, was, I, I know what you're saying. You're cherry picking. I want you to go watch this video. You think we're cherry picking their sources? Um, we're not. That's that is their source. There are no source. That's their source. It's their only source. Next clip. But they were only hired for jobs that were considered unskilled. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so she's talking about slaves after after slavery. Listen. No one is condoning slavery, right? No. Anyone in this room, right? No. Any hands up condoning Not slavery? Fan. No, okay, no one's condoning slavery. But slavery was a law of the land. Slavery, as you, you talked about, even with Europe, slavery was the norm. People had lived with slavery, and now you freed slaves, and of course they were unskilled. They were tilling the field. So listen, it's not perfect. But baby steps. You're not gonna get the Count of Monte Cristo out of his 10 year sentence immediately, but if you could get him in, you know, like a basement apartment four months in, he probably would have been taking it as opposed to etching on the wall. But listen, I'll, I'll take the baby steps. Yeah. You're no longer a slave, so we're, we're trying to feather you into the economy. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Can you can you do the service industry? Yeah, yeah let's, let's try and build some momentum. Give us a little of this. time on this, all right? We're not perfect, but we're we're getting better. Nice clip. Racism and classism run deep. Yes, they do, Miss Tiramisu <laughs> on the Upper East Side. Racism and this is just tipping is so bourgeoisie. Garcon! <laughs> Garcon! <laughs> Could I have a sprig of mint on my tiramisu? <laughs> that means boy, right? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that like a almost a slur or something like that? Like, no, it's not a slur. Not a slur, but boy. No, but isn't it like, you know, boy? Yeah, it's in Podesta's, like in a bad Podesta's way. basement. There's a connotation, but it's not <laughs> a slur. Gotcha, okay. Was that your only question? Yeah, that was the question I had about it. All right, next Inside clip. clip. This attitude is summed up in this passage by a reporter in 1902. I had never known any but Negro servants. <laughs> Negroes take tips, of course. One expects that of them. It is a token of their inferiority. But to give money to a white man was embarrassing to me. So John's Journal. So I searched high and low 
and I could find nary an article from a John oh. Speed in that area, let yeah. alone one with a lisp. Oh. Little lisp. <laughs> yeah. The Negro is in fear. So you couldn't just find just someone to put on some kind of colonial sound. Yeah. Really, fusion? <laughs> Do you, you have to walk over to HR and Vox? Do you have anyone who can do our narration? We've got the man for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't finally find the original article from John oh, Speed was man. in McBride's magazine. Here it is. And it was actually the journalist was talking about how common white servers were in the north. And he found that kind of odd because he was from the south. So he'd only seen black servers. So again, they have one source. Then they're talking about this article taking a paragraph to mean something that it, it, it was, it's almost the opposite of what he said in the article. Oh, next clip. Figure. By the late 1880s, black workers accounted for nearly half of the hospitality industry. Then in the 20s, restaurants that were losing money because of prohibition laws encouraged tipping, making it even more popular. Okay. Black Americans accounted for almost half. What about the other more than half? Majority <laughs> or plurality, some might say. <laughs> Who, who who makes that demographic? Up? I'm, I'm still looking for the negative part here. They're giving them money. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, I just they, they just they almost were half. I understand if you're going to look mm. at percentage of the population, but that means more than half were not black. And they, yeah, by the way, exactly. no mention of the Great Depression in here. By the no. way, I know the Great no. Depression started later in the 20s, but even if you look at basically the prohibition, right? It was a the Great Depression time. for for industries it's that were based squeeze. on alcohol. Yes. Yeah, it was a tough squeeze for them because you had made your living. You know, it's a pub, no. it's a bar off of alcohol yeah. sales. And before the Great Depression, they said, no, no, no none of this for you. So f for those people, it might as well have been the Great Depression. Imagine, and yes. so they were finding yeah. any cost-cutting measures. They, could, they, were, they, they couldn't serve the thing that made them money. Imagine, yeah. imagine if Applebee's had to survive without selling their $7 sandwich oh, on Tuesday nights. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> they were just that so they just, in the 20s, they were all of a sudden prohibition. They like, can we uh, interest you in a taquita roll? <laughs> No. no. How about some bathtub gin? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh in 1996, the then head of the National Restaurant Association, Herman Cain, convinced a Republican-led Congress to set a two-tiered wage system for tipped and non-tipped workers. The tipped minimum wage was set at $2.13 per hour. Today, in 17 states, the legal minimum wage for tipped workers is still only $2.13 per hour. I just had to include that because it started out about it started out based on racism and slavery, and then Herman Cain, who was the blackest guy to ever run for office. <laughs> we're not black, talking about exactly. Barack Obama. We're talking about Condoleezza Rice. We're not even talking about Ben Carson, single mother Detroit Ever tried to stab yeah. kind of black. We're no. talking about my plane is nine nine nine. Get yourself some Gotti's pizza, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that man ran for office and came very close, and I and I did that about you. What were you saying? I love it. No, look, I have a lot of experience with this. I made five dollars and twenty five cents an hour working in this industry yeah. because I made. $15 an hour average tip share on top of that. Guess what? If I'd have made $2 an hour average, I would have moved on somewhere else. That's exactly what well, happens the in this industry. people in the industry, it's, like, it's kind of like performance-based pay, uh, or certainly performance-based yeah. bonuses for teachers. The only teachers complaining about it are crappy, are crappy teachers. teachers. Yeah. Exactly. The only servers who are against tips are crappy yes, servers. working at Waffle House, smoking a joint, walking up to the table. It's not working out. And it, it, I was a server. You still get crappy tips even as a good server, but yeah. it still evens out in your favor. Yeah. Consistently. It's supposed to motivate you. It's like the lowest skilled thing. Pick up a plate and walk it over, right? You're supposed to be motivated to do better than that. But I don't want to, though. No. So, it, so you don't deserve money. This is anecdotal. Statistically, tipped workers make an average of $13 per hour, which is obviously way more than the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. Now, let's look at this. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, the average wage for all occupations is $16.87 an hour. Okay? Yeah. So $16.87 an hour. People in the service industry who work on tips are making about $13 an hour. Listen, they're not rocket scientists. <laughs> they work this hard. Includes, this includes actual rocket scientists make yeah. $16.87 an hour, $13 <laughs> an hour. Is it you're, you're pretty good. within striking distance <laughs> of the person who might be providing. Mean, this is all a part of the same statistic. This person performed brain surgery. They brought you your Applebee's two for 20, and they got it wrong. Twice. The spinach dip was runny. It's always runny. <laughs> Good spinach dip. Watch, someone's going to say, well, no, it's brain surgery makes $16 Look, an hour. I'm yeah, talking about no. the statistics. Yes. And you guys work hard. That's fine. We're not talking about hard work, though. We're talking about skill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much. Here's the thing. If you want to be a server, honestly, and just you want to get good tips, just be nice. Yes. Just yeah. be a nice person. Don't be a jerk. I'm Show amazed off. when I go. Every once in a while. Just, yeah. Come back to the you table. You just go to a restaurant. <laughs> 
and you're like, I just, I can't believe that this is, and, and you end up tipping them 15 to 20 percent anyway yeah. because you have to because you know this that they obviously they make their money off of tips and you have Adam ruins everything saying you're a jerk if you don't tip them. But this person literally walked up, didn't serve you the food that you ordered, yeah. refused to change it, and then charged you for both dishes in the first place. Just you want to get tipped well, just be nice. That's a start. Next clip. Non-white restaurant workers take home 56 percent less than their white peers. Okay, uh, a lot to unpack here. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a short <laughs> phrase. She says non, so it started out as slavery, black, ignoring Europe, right? Ignoring where it actually, you know, ignoring the Middle Ages. Now it's non-white versus white. So that includes everyone yeah. who's not white. It's no longer about black. And you notice something here? This is just the restaurant worker comparison. Yes. Yeah. This, so, is like, this is the box tactic of just changing yeah. the parameters and the definitions as we go Consistently along. Consistently changing the parameters. Start agree on, and then move out to exclude well, more and more. It starts with a lie. It starts a little kernel of a lie, and then it grows into a popcorn of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 it's just <laughs> restaurant. This isn't now. It's not only not about servers. It's not about tipped workers. It's just everyone working in a yeah. restaurant. If you look at, does that stat include Michelin, uh, Michelin star chefs? Does it include sous chefs? Does it include people who are working as uh, servers or working as managers at high-end steakhouses? This is the total number, and they just say, oh, by the way, whites and non-whites. Yeah, I looked at the NLRB stats or the, the Labor Review Board, and they said that seven of the ten were food service industries. It included cooks. <laughs> it included dishwashers, and I'm like, of course. That's yeah. an easy job. You pull it out, you throw the rack over here. You can't put all that in and lump it into this one stat. Well, she did. Next yeah. clip. Good effort. According to Jay Raman, <laughs> almost 66% to of the Raman. 6 million tipped workers in America are women. Okay, sounds about right. And 93% of workplace deaths are men. <laughs> Why? That's because your chances of slipping on somebody's Arnold Palmer at an Applebee's as you serve the runny spinach dip is far lower than someone off of falling off a roof while they're installing sure. roof material and some roofing shingles. is the name of the job. Shingles. Shingles, <laughs> shingles is the That's disease. I don't really know if they install shingles. Nine, 66% of tipped workers are women. Great. And they're making more than the average the average hourly rate. That's <laughs> fantastic. Isn't that fat? Now, so now we're saying a majority of women are making more than the average worker. By the way, 93% of workplace deaths are men. Moving on. Europe? Where this whole thing began has long oh, now she to talks about pay Europe. restaurant workers a full wage. Yeah, and by the way, in Europe, they're bitching about it. They're bitching about going to tips, uh, going away from tips yes. and how their, their wages are declining. Yeah, at the end of this article, too, they're praising two companies that went away from tipping and just paying their employees more. And one of the companies, that all the servers revolted and wanted to leave because they were making less money yeah. going that way. That's they wanted surprise. to be rewarded for performance and you know why that happens is you take away tips the good servers leave yeah they go somewhere else and then you're left with the crappy servers and no one wants to go to your business it's like the five for 15. yeah exactly exactly yeah it, I was, I was it, but if you're paying them 15 but they can't even put the filet of fish on properly no no yeah I'm, no this i'm putting a kiosk up front and replacing <laughs> and a few of you guys and you're screwing the guy who is working his way up That's to management yeah you're screwing the guy who is working his way up the guy who the guy who shows up the guy who suits up whether he's having a good day or a bad day and he says hey i'm gonna be the best damn server that i can be you there, there's so much upwards yeah. mobility thanks to free enterprise in this country you don't have to you, you can work at mcdonald's for six months nine months and just not be an autistic pothead, and you will be a shift manager with yeah. Benny's. Okay, <laughs> this is and what's, this, and I hate to do. I hate to do this because it's like it's one of those things. I, I don't want to be that guy who's saying, "Hey, you know, let's. Why are you always blaming the white man for?" But it's just they're taking a lie. The idea yeah. that tipping is based on slavery and racism, carrying that into today with mm. a bunch of false statistics and one Indian lady who apparently is the authority on all things tipping but based she's an wage, activist. and then using that to paint with a broad brush, our economy is unfair and the system is corrupt and the deck is stacked against you because of white men who didn't even create tipping in the United States and didn't create slavery either. By the way, who's doing the most to ensure that servers make more? I hate to do this, but when you politicize everything, it's white male Republicans. We're statistically the best tippers. <laughs> Point final, as we say in French Canada, that's it, that's all, pack it up, send it on back to Mrs. Tiramisu at Orsay in the Upper East Side. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe.
by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you're not aware of it now, there's no way you're learning the internet at this point. I'm not going to help you. But this was clipped from my daily show, available exclusively to lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club members. If you're a student, military, or veteran, enter in that promo code. It's less than $6 a month, and you get daily content. No more clips, plus this hand-etched mug. Oh, I just, when I feel it, I got a chill, like, on the inside.